So uh, I don't know uh, how many of you uh, know Justin Smiley from Il Buco Alimentari or George Mendez from Aldea, but two young, brilliant, well, relatively young. You both look really well rested. You're going to give that whole overworked chef thing a, uh, a run for its money as conventional mythology. Uh, but I think what we're doing today is you guys are going to turn loose and do two different vegetable dishes. Is that your understanding? We are giving our own little interpretation of ramps and how versatile they are from an Italian point of view and then a Portuguese point of view. How's that? I love that. Right? I love that. Nicely said. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is going to be a tough room, at yeah. least over here in this area, because so, one of the... So we're going to divide the audience right now. Italy, Portugal. So One of, one of the beautiful... Choose your, choose your sides. I want to leave lots of time for people to uh, ask questions because I think it's much more interesting to have a conversation with everybody. Um, so I'm gonna we'll get to more relevant questions while you're cooking. But do you have an idea what you're about to do, George? If you want to explain what you're going to be cooking, and then we can get you started. And Justin, you can do the same thing. Sure, sure. Okay, so uh, we're both going to do a, a dish with ramps. Who here does not know what a ramp is? Show him. Don't be afraid. Okay. So ramps come out in the spring. They're also known as wild leeks. Um, they're, they're wild. They, they sprout when the, water, when the weather just turns from winter to spring around a 55 to 60 degree range. They just you know, come up right out of the ground. They got a bulb you have with the root attached, no? Okay. No. Uh, they have a root, you pull them out just like onion and they have a very mildy, garlicky, sweet balance of flavor. I'm gonna take ramps and talk about uh, a few preparations and then match them with one of my favorite ingredients in the world, bacalao, or salt cod, that we cure at Aldea. Uh, we make our own salt cod, we, we buy fresh fish, we cure it, uh, we dry it, and then we hydrate again, water to remove the saltiness. So that's gonna get poached at a really low temperature in olive oil, approximately 55 degrees Celsius, which is about 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, just to the point where the fish proteins coagulate but you don't see anything coming out, meaning it doesn't bleed any white uh, albumin, should you say. So that goes into really low olive oil, skin side down, and it's not gonna fry, you're not gonna hear any noise, it's gonna confit really, really slowly. So that being said, uh, we're gonna be, let the cod poach. In addition to that, we have, this is what we did with ramps, is I basically just took ramps and put them in a dehydrator, a food dehydrator. You can buy it at Cabela's, you can buy it at, uh, I don't know, probably Bed Bath & Beyond, probably sells mm -hmm. a you can Buy them everywhere for 40 bucks. Yeah, a dehydrator, you know, for making jerky, for making whatever. And we just took the ramps and just sprinkled a little bit of salt and put them in there and they were crispy like a cracker within about six hours. So go ahead and, and pass it around. You can bite into it. You'll see it's, it, they're pretty strong. So they give you a good breath after you eat it. I think we did the same thing. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we, uh, at Aldea, we have it on the menu right now, actually, this, similar to this preparation I'm doing today, is we made a soubise or a puree of ramps, which is we take onions, we sweat them, we sweat them until they're really soft. We deglaze with vinho verde. Vinho verde is a uh, Portuguese spritzy white wine made from unripe grapes. That's very famous in the warm weather. Everybody knows what vinho verde is, yes? If you don't, si. come to well. Come to all day and I'll give you some on me, free. So we, we deglaze that, we add the ramps, and then we put it in a blender. And what you get is a nice bright green puree, sweet flavor. Uh, and then as I finish the dish, I'm going to saute some ramps, char some ramps, and then put the whole dish together for you guys to see. Take it away, Justin. So I'm doing more of a vegetable preparation with the ramps. Uh, I made fresh ricotta this morning which is milk that we buy from Bat and Kill Dairy. Um, I was gonna make it, but I thought we'd have time constraints. And then uh, kind of riffing off the same thing he did, we make a crumble with Marcona almonds, bread, and dehydrated rams, so it's kind of like Amiga's. So this is a play on like something you'd find in Catalonia or kind of like a shepherd's lunch. Um, and we're gonna serve it with this crumble, the fresh cheese, and a little charred ramp. And could you, could you describe to people the process here because you glossed over that, but this is the type of thing that a lot of hobbyist cooks are doing on weekend. I mean, you could do this when you get home at night. It's super easy. Um, we make it fresh every day. And like I said, we use milk and heavy cream from Bat and Kill Dairy. Um, 
in the process, we just bring the, the milk and the cream up to about 100 degrees. We stir in rennet and salt, and then we allow the curds to rest for an hour. And we cut the curds, strain it out, which is separating the curds from the whey. And like the relative dryness of the cheese is how long you let it hang or how long you let it press. So we do everything from nudie, which has to be a lot drier. We also take it and press it for five days and we kind of caramelize it with turpentine sugar and make like a creme brulee. Uh, but in this instance right here, we're just gonna take the fresh curds and just try to dress it up with a little bit of clean vegetables. And for those that are wondering what this tastes like on its own, it's most similar to? Ricotta, just like fresh farms cheese. I have a question about the ramp thing. Where are you, are you, you know, I remember, I'm a little older than you guys, but I remember the very first real foraged ingredients that came to the back door of kitchens I was at in New York 30 years ago were mushrooms and ramps. And they were driven up by truck from the Virginias before people started saying, you know, those are grown around. There, there's gold in them <laughs> our hills too. Um, we have them in our backyard in Minnesota. We just walk in the backyard and there's fiddleheads and ramps just growing on the hill behind my house. Um, do you get a lot of your inspiration from, you know, where for this kind of thing? You talked about the harbingers of spring, and I and I agree with you. It's exciting. But when you were young coming up, I mean, you know, and in the kitchens that you were in, I mean, Gramercy, the, between the two of you, it reads like a who's who list of great restaurants. Um, can you talk a little bit about that today? Because now food service companies are able to access those kinds of things in a much different right. way too. Right, I think I first learned about ramps um, in 1994 when I was working for uh, David Boulay at the original location on Duane Street, which is now I think Scalini Fideli. Um, and it arrived from uh, a farmer that's still in the green market today, uh, Rick Bishop at uh, Mountain Sweet Berry Farm. He's there on Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays and he is gonna be the first, probably one of the first farmers who is gonna sell Catskill Mountain ramps in the green market in about two weeks. So he brought the stuff in and um, I just remember the chef or sous chef taking it and sauteing it in a pan like spinach. Yeah. And then we were, and then we were blanching it and wrapping it around lamb loin. And that was really, that was some tedious stuff and then steaming it. <laughs> so, I mean, it, yes, it, it, just, was. it was just, it was just a lot of versatility. I mean, like, and then the dehydrating into like crispiness and, you know, uh, Justin charred them in a pan and blackened them, and I did the same thing. So you get, you know, it's 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 burned. Basically, they're burned, but it adds it's a whole different dimension you know, flavor. So yeah, it was it was back then in '94 that I learned about the ramp, and then it was soonly followed by fingerling potatoes. You know, it was the rot, the rot, R A T T E, fingerling potato right. that Joël Robichon was using in Paris. A seed made its way to New York State by Rick, and he started growing fingerling potatoes that, you know, and it was turned into potato puree by David Boulay via Joel Robichon. And the most amazing Corrigo's. potatoes. Yeah, potato puree with, I think it was butter puree with a little bit of potato. A little potato to, to hold the butter together. Uh, it to balance the emulsion. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's um, a lot of history in there. I mean, I, and the whole foraging movement that's a lot of chefs are, are, are taking part in embracing. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that we walk in the woods and we're stepping on food that we don't even know about. So it's, I think it's really, really, uh, it's fascinating, it's really interesting. It's, you know, and I've, um, I am kind of old now, I feel it, and I've, like, 20 years in New York seeing what has happened through food in the years. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I think we're, we're, I think we're definitely in the most exciting place in the world for food right now. Without